I would argue that uh, science and technology can significantly contribute to save the environment as well as has been in favor of letting the community be aware of the problems that are in the environment. I'll mention certain examples. Uh, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, when the first gasoline cars were in the market, nobody was worried about pollution caused by these vehicles. But what happened was, thanks to scientists, chemists, physics, mathematicians, engineers who had come together and started to understand and learn about the environment, they, for example, developed models, uh, the ecologists look at what changes and climates. They came together and started to say, we have to stop this. Now we need to think in a different way and introduce science and technology, not only to mass produce and make processes economic and affordable, we have to make sure that we also preserve the environment. I think that we have a tendency in American society to turn first to technological solutions even when a problem is not primarily one that um, deals with technology itself. We have a president right now who is interested in establishing some kind of market for carbon so that we can actually drive the creation and implementation of low carbon energy solutions. But he's worried that he doesn't have the political capital or the support from the population to be able to implement those solutions. That is not a technology problem. We have a lot of technology that's available to us right now, which we have not really proven to be very good users of from an efficiency perspective or from an environmental perspective. So. I have some concerns about our ability in the future to make smart use of technology. Thanks to advances in, technological, in, in technology and in science, uh, educators and universities have, now has a significant mission to bring and use the science to educate the public. Because at the end, it's going to be a decision that the people are going to have to make. As an example, so some things that we're doing in the laboratory right now in which we're using urine to produce hydrogen. Who even ever thought that you could use urine to make hydrogen, which in turn is one of the cleanest fuels. So the technology is there. The sign has been used. So now what it takes is people to say, we need to adopt this. At the beginning, there is going to be a cost involvement, and people are going to have to adapt to this. But there is going to be a moment that if we don't use it, what is available and what has been developed through science, no matter how much money then we put in the future, they might not be able to go back into preserving the environment. I am really glad and to see how much of the science and technology research is now being directed toward efforts to mitigate CO2 emissions and find new uses for waste products and essentially get our society to a more, more diversified energy environment um, in which we don't make ourselves so vulnerable to dependence on one particular energy source. It's really um, exciting to see that direction that things are taking. And at the same time, I feel that um, fundamentally, if we don't reorient our ideas about um, human society as being integrated in and part of the natural world, we will fall short of where we need to be as a society. Mm -hmm.